Hello everyone, welcome to another Texas Star build video. In this video I will be showing you how to make this star using a maximum of 45 degree angles. I made a previous video where I made that style of star, which looks very similar but they're slightly different. That one uses 54 degree angles. After making the video, I realized that some of you might have a miter saw that only goes to 45 degrees. And I actually did end up getting a few comments like that. So uh, I thought I'd make this video. I did some math. I figured out the angles. So if your saw only goes to 45 degree angles, then watch this video and I'll show you how I made this. So the first step will be to find yourself a 1x4. This is a piece of SPF from my local hardware store. Nothing fancy, but I did find a piece with no knots and uh, really nice and straight. So looking forward to using that. Uh, I have made these with pallet wood in the past, and that works great too. Just takes a little bit more uh, labor to take a pallet apart and uh, straighten the boards and all that. Next, I'm going to take my secret weapon here, which is uh, a trial star that I made. Uh, we will be setting the saw at 45 degrees for the first cut. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is the saw that I'll be using. It's a 12 inch Bosch with the articulating arm. I had a few people ask me about this. No, I'm not sponsored. And yes, it is an awesome saw and I'm super happy I got this. It also does some ridiculous angles, including going up to 60 degrees. But as mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't have a saw that goes beyond 45 degrees. So start by setting your saw at 45 degrees make the first cut as far over as you can to the end of the board and then I'll show you how far to measure for the spacing. After making that initial 45 degree angle cut, measure five and a half inches over and make your next cut at 45 degrees as well. And you're going to do that five times until you have five pieces uh, which is five pieces to one star. And to make it a little bit easier, what I like to do is find out where that five and a half inches is, where I'm going to cut, and set up this thing over here. That's just a stop block. So every time I slide this piece of wood over there, I'm getting the same length each time. A benefit of doing this is you can cut a whole bunch of them at the same time without having to mark down every five and a half inches. So if you're making like 10 stars, for example, that's going to be 50 different pieces to mark down if you don't have a stop block. So that can just, you know, make your life a little bit easier. Once you get your five pieces cut, you're going to change the angle of your saw to 31.5. And I, I know this from trial and error and from my secret weapon, of course, which I love to refer back to. So that will be for the second cut and the third cut. 31.5 degrees. And to know where to cut that 31.5 degrees, I measure this edge, which is 4 inches and 7 eighths long. Basically, you're measuring from the point to the corner here. So that's 4 inches and 7 eighths. And then I go over here and I mark it over here at 4 inches and 7 eighths. And that's where I'll be making my first 31.5 degree angle cut. And as you can see, I've got a really nice stop block here. It's just the leftover wood from cutting the 45 degree angles. And I set it so that every time I put a piece in here, that the saw will be at exactly four inches and seven eighths for each cut. And uh, by doing this, the piece of wood stays in place and it's a lot safer than holding it with your fingers because your fingers would be getting way too close to the blade and it would be way too dangerous. So this is what I like to do and sometimes I also use a piece of stick to kind of hold that in. So let's go ahead and make those first cuts and, uh, or I guess it would be the second cut and then I'll show you how to do the third cut. And 
And this is what we're left with in awkward looking shape. So all we're gonna do now is flip it over and make the third cut at 31.5 degrees. And we're gonna do that to all five pieces. So I've got all five pieces cut here and it's really important to do a dry fit and see how the angles are lining up, especially if you're planning on cutting like 10 stars, because if one star isn't lining up quite right, then all 10 of your stars is not going to be correct and you're going to have to kind of recut them and it's going to be a real pain in the butt. Now, although you set your saw upright and all the angles should be correct, sometimes you go to put it together and it's not quite lining up properly and you get a gap like that. Now there's several reasons that this can happen. I find that one of the main reasons for me is that I'm using such a large saw. So this is a 12 inch blade and you're going to have a lot more flex going sideways when cutting with a larger blade as opposed to like a 10 inch blade. The other thing is you're dealing with a lot of different angles and any minute um, imperfection in the cut will basically magnify the error in the final product. I hope that makes sense. Also, when placing this piece in here, it's not a perfect hold, right? So when I'm slicing, there's the force of the blade is, is pushing the wood this way. And you are getting, I don't know if you can see that, but let me see here. Yeah, you probably can't see it on camera, but there's maybe like a half millimeter of movement in here. So that will, that's enough to throw your angle off just by a little bit. And when you're, when you're fitting five pieces together, those minute errors add up to make a large gap in one of the pieces. So how I fix that, uh, my saw was at 31.5. I changed it to something that looks like it equals maybe like 31.7 going this way. And that will be just enough to, to shave this corner off on every single piece, but like by like maybe less than half a millimeter. And I also slid this stop lock over by about a millimeter. If you just leave this in place and try to recut it with a different angle, it doesn't quite work. So you got to slide your, sl your stop block over about a millimeter before you recut all the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and recut them. And uh, although I say the saw is set at 31.7, my angles that I'm getting in the end with all the, you know, the flex and movement and potential inaccuracies uh, with the saw flex and all that, um, I'm probably still getting 31.5 because that's the math behind making the star where these angles are at 45 degrees as opposed to your traditional star being at 54 degrees. Anyhow, this stuff can get pretty complicated, but uh, let's go ahead and recut those and see what happens. Actually, before I start cutting, I thought of one more reason why the angles can be off sometimes. It's a very simple one. Sometimes you just get a little wood chip stuck in here or in here between the piece and and the fence and uh, you know you might not notice it and that's enough to throw everything off so just thought I'd mention that all right I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and uh, I'll just cut it off camera and then show you the end result so that actually went quite well I only had to shave off about half a millimeter or so and as you can see the final piece here slides in very nicely much better than before so that's just a, a pro tip there. I wouldn't want you guys to cut a whole bunch of them and find out they don't quite fit and, you know, kind of freak out and get annoyed, right? Because it can be very annoying when your angles don't fit. So I hope those tips can help you out a little bit. And for the finish, I'm going to start by sanding all the pieces with 150 grit sandpaper. And then I'm going to apply my homemade vinegar stain to give it uh, a similar look to this. Um, it will be slightly different as you saw at the beginning of the video uh, because I do end up using a router to uh, put a chamfer on these edges. If you do want to see 
how I stained this star, check out my channel. There is a video on how I made this exact one here. Uh, it's titled Texas Stars Assembly and Stain. Uh, as for the stain itself, I am planning on making a video on how to make that stain uh, so you can have some of your own homemade stain. So the first thing I do is brew myself a cup of tea and that's what I'll be using for part one of the stain. So I usually just put uh, two tea bags in 500 mils of boiling water and uh, then I let it steep and cool down so it doesn't burn me. And I'm just going to pour a little bit into this cup. That's probably all I'm going to need. Probably a lot less than that, actually. And part two of the stain is this homemade vinegar stain that I made here. So, like I said, I will make a video on how to make this. And just pour a little bit of that in here. So, part one, we start with the tea. And basically, just take a regular paintbrush and brush it on. And now that I brushed the tea on all five pieces, I will switch to my vinegar stain and brush this on. And I've put some gloves on so I don't stain my hands because this stuff can stain for quite a while. So same process, just wipe it on. And you can see the, uh, the stain starts to react with the tea almost immediately there. And, uh, yeah, look at that. And uh, creates that weathered look, which I really like. And there we are, all five pieces stained. Only took a few minutes. The stain will darken as it dries. So we just need to leave this sit overnight and uh, see what it looks like in the morning. 12 hours later and the stain is dry. It didn't get as gray and weathered as I thought it would. It's more of a brownish kind of color. I do find that when using the stain with palette wood like I did on this star, I get more of that gray effect. I feel like the stain penetrates the wood a lot deeper than when using new wood like I did here. So I think I need to add a little bit more character on this. So I'm going to pull out the torch and uh, just a little propane torch. Uh, one of these things here. And uh, I'm going to see if I could just add a little bit more character to this. So I actually really like the way that looks. I'm happy I did that. Uh, quite a difference from just the stained one. And I think when all five pieces are done, it's going to come together quite nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them off camera. Uh, and then I'm going to be setting up my router on my router table and chamfering the edges. And the bit I'll be using is a 45 degree chamfering bit. I actually ended up sanding each piece first with a 320 grit sandpaper. And then I wiped it off with a rag and then went to the router. And now that the routering is complete, I'm going to go ahead and glue it together, put a backing on the back of it to make it stronger, and staple some twine on the back. That'll give us something to hang it with. Okay, once you get it where you like it, just leave it there and let it dry. Uh, surprisingly, the the parchment paper kind of holds it together when the glue leaks out the back of this and uh, so it usually stays put. By using wood glue rather than hot glue gun you have several minutes to adjust your star and uh, line everything up. Whereas uh, when you're dealing with the hot glue gun it dries within seconds and I find you just don't have enough time to line this thing up properly and uh, it just throws everything off. So I definitely recommend that you use the wood glue 
as opposed to the hot glue gun. But really, you can do whatever you want. That's just how I do it. So after about an hour, the glue is dried. The star can be a little bit delicate, so be careful. Then I just flip it over, use some more wood glue to glue the backing to the back of the star. And this will give it a lot of strength. This is just a 1 8 inch hardboard. And uh, I think I bought a 4x8 sheet years ago for about $15. Not sure what it costs now. And then I use my air gun to put some finishing nails in there. If you don't have an air gun, uh, don't worry about it. Just put a weight on top and let the glue uh, dry and it should be plenty strong. And the next step is putting a twine loop on the back to hang your star. I just use whatever cheap twine I can buy from the dollar store. And I just staple it onto the back. As you can see here, I'm folding that bottom part up, that gives it a lot more strength, so it's not going to slide through those staples. And that's all done. That ends up being really strong. And there it is, a Texas Star made with a miter saw that only goes to 45 degrees. It actually turned out really good. I think it's a really simple process of making these stars. I thought the previous video I made was the easiest way to make a star, but I think this way is actually even easier. I'm probably going to go with this process from now on. So I took a few notes while making these. Um, let's just take a look at the size here. So this is made with a 1x4, and with this process I think you can get a maximum of, looks like 13 and a quarter across there. And as for height, it looks like 12 and 3 quarters. And one thing I noticed when looking at the scraps, um, let me just get my scrap wood here. These are the scraps when cutting those uh, five and a half inch pieces. So I kind of feel like we could probably go a little bit smaller. So let me just show you here. So this would be the scrap pieces when cutting one of those five and a half inch lengths. So, you know, because of the cost of lumber, I'm trying to um, be cognizant of my waste here. So we could probably go to five and a quarter, possibly smaller. You could go smaller if you wanted a smaller star as well. So. Um, probably not a big deal for some of you, but uh, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, the total length of the 1x4 that I used for one of the stars uh, was 31 and a half inches. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think we could probably reduce that. So technically with one 8 foot 1x4, you could make three of these. And I also want to show you the difference from the stars cut with 45 degree angles on the miter saw versus the 54. So the thing that I notice is it kind of just looks fatter for lack of uh, better vocabulary there. Um, this is the one cut with 45, uh, sorry, 54 degrees. And it looks, each piece looks kind of longer and more slender. And if you stack them on top of each other, you'll notice the main difference. I'll just move my camera here. which is with the 54 degrees, the star goes straight across. You can see the, there's a straight line going here. Whereas the 45 degree one on the bottom, you can see it kind of goes downwards. So technically, my previous video makes a more geometrically correct star. But hey, a star is a star, right? I think this one, uh, I actually kind of prefer the look of this one. 
And technically, it uses less wood because these pieces are shorter. Now, let's compare it to this star here because this was also done with 54 degree angles on the miter saw. And uh, surprisingly enough, like it looks quite a bit bigger, but this section here, if you measure from here to here, is the same as here to here. So you can see that making the stars on a saw that goes to 54 degrees, you get a larger star. Let's just measure that here. So this one was 13 and, what did I say? 13 and a quarter across, and this one is 15 and a half. So a substantial difference there. Um, in the end, I don't know what size of a star is good for you. I don't even know what I prefer. But with the cost of wood, I'd probably go with this one. If I'm making stars with pallet wood, uh, I might go with this style. If I only have a saw that goes to 45 degrees, then I would go with this one. So obviously, everything kind of depends on everything. Anyways, I am definitely rambling at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe and like and share and do all that fun stuff. Thank you.